It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the baseball head coach of Beavert College, Mike Victory. How are you doing today? Doing all right. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you got started in coaching in baseball? Sure. Uh, went to school, uh, you know, really thinking I wanted to be a teacher. That was kind of my plan when, uh, when I got out of college. And, and I knew coaching was going to be something I wanted to do. My mom was a coach, and, and I started helping her out when I was you know, in middle school. And I coached, uh, coached a little bit in town all through high school. So you know, when I graduated, uh, I was going for my master's at St. Mary's still, and I continued to help out with the baseball program. And you know, being away from baseball for a year, from playing, uh, and getting the opportunity to coach, it became evident to me that that, that was more the, the career route that I wanted to take was to stay in coaching and see if I could you know, get to the point where I am today and be a head coach of my own program. Uh, you know, and it took a little bit of a grind you know, getting through a couple different schools, but you know, we're here now. Can you talk about some of the places that you've coached at? Sure. I was at St. Mary's College in Maryland, uh, Division Three school in Southern Maryland. That's where I played my, my college ball. Uh, you know, smaller D3 school, too, in, in Allegheny College, which is in northwest Pennsylvania. Uh, I was up there for, for three years. Uh, I got to coach my assistant coach now, Rob Julian, up there. Uh, and then, you know, we got down here to Brevard College in, in Brevard, North Carolina. Can you talk about coaching at? The Alamein College, Allegheny. Yes. Yeah. So you know, that was a, a new experience for me. It was my first position as a uh, full-time assistant coach. I had been, you know, just kind of volunteering when I was at St. Mary's. So uh, it, was, it was different being able to be in the office every single day, and you know, my job was always focused on baseball while I was there, and it really let me fine-tune my processes as a as a pitching coach. Uh, we were able, I was able to do a little bit more research and, and get myself more, more dive, dove into what I wanted to do with my staff. Um, you know, it allowed me to be around. For a lot more with the recruits that we were trying to bring in there. Uh, I had the opportunity to work for, for two head coaches while I was there. Uh, Kelly Swinney hired me. Uh, he moved on to a new opportunity for his family after my first year. And, and then I had Brandon Crum uh, my second two years there. And it was great to be able to learn from uh, you know, two experienced collegiate coaches in, in that time period. I think it was it was helpful to continue to help me figure out who I wanted to be as a head coach to see see what they were doing. Um, and and they were Allegheny was in a position where you know they'd been a very good team uh, for a long time. You know they're one of the winningest teams, especially in the '90s. And they had you know missed the conference tournament a little bit for a couple of years, and then you know we worked really hard to get our guys back there, and that was a really uh, exciting opportunity for, for the team to get back to the conference tournament in, in my third year there. What was your experience like coaching at St. Mary's after you were the baseball player for St. Mary's? Sure. It's, it's, it's a tough transition. You know, the guys know you yeah, more as a player and then you move into an authority role. I was a two-year captain. I think that helped a lot. They had already kind of experienced me in a, a leadership role on the team. So going into coaching wasn't all that different. Um, I didn't have a very defined role my first year and then moved into more of the full-time pitching coach for the last three years that I was there. Um, you know, the guys knew that, you know, I'd been someone that had worked hard and, and you know, pushed myself to help our program succeed. So I think it was easy for them to, to want to buy in with the things I was having them do. Uh, you know, Coach Jenkins, who, who had coached me and was my boss there for four years, was, is, you know, very experienced. He coached for a very, very long time. He uh, definitely gave me some leeway. Uh, to do what I needed to do with our staff. And sometimes that meant making a mistake and then him, you know, correcting me and helping me get better at what I was doing. Uh, but, uh, you know, I developed some good relationships with, with some guys in, in that staff that we had good conversations about what we felt like was going well and what wasn't going well. And I knew that was the, the relationship I wanted to build with, with pitchers was being able to make them feel like they had a little bit of say in what they were doing. You know, pitchers are, are weird dudes and they, and want to do their own thing sometimes. And, and then there are other times when they needed to just, you know, buy in with what we were doing. Um, I got to coach Sam Beatty while I was there and he was, he was a, a very, very good pitcher. And we, 
he had a down year, one year, and then we, we bounced him back, and he ended up being one of the only all-region pitchers that St. Mary's had ever had. Uh, and he was a kid that, you know, lived and breathed what we wanted to do as a staff every single day. And he was just a great example for other guys to follow, and that made my job a lot easier. How has that helped you now that you're now a head coach? I mean, I think the – getting thrown into the fire my first few years at St. Mary's and, and you know, just kind of being said, Hey, do it. What was great. Um, I had some great mentors there besides coach Jenkins, uh, you know, coach of women's basketball, uh, Crystal Gibson was, was big and letting me kind of develop into my own and let me help with recruiting. And then Lisa Valentine was the, the women's lacrosse coach there while I was there. And she was, you know, always had an open door to, to talk to me about what she was doing well with recruiting uh, and helped me kind of, refine my pitch as a coach uh, and, you know, just having to start off right away, just being fully immersed as a pitching coach and as a recruiting coordinator. And, and, you know, like I said, getting told no a few times by a lot of kids when we're recruiting them, you know, it makes it easier to hear no the next time, but gets you more excited to go out and try to get the right guys going forward. And I think all of that experience of just go, go, go and getting to recruit to a school that I really cared about was big. Um, you know, there's, there's things that we do here when we're recruiting that are very similar that we did then. And there's other things that we do that are different because I figured out new and better ways to do them, um, over my time as an assistant. Can you talk about your time coaching as the USA, um, baseball Academy? Sure. It was a, uh, eight week program that we did, uh, every winter at St. Mary's, uh, USA baseball Academy kind of helped colleges, uh, have the, have camps at their, uh, at their schools without having us to go through, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, insurance things and, and getting the, getting the rosters of kids, uh, their website was already set up and then they just came with us. And it, it was a very regimented program working with kids as you know, little as six, basically teaching them how to throw all the way up to high schoolers and, and working with more, um, refined, you know, pitching prospects or, or hitters or base runners or whatever we were doing, uh, for me, you know, it gave me a clearer picture of, of what I needed to do as a coach uh, and, and help me start to re-examine our throwing programs and what we were doing on a daily basis so that things could be a little bit more flushed out for our guys when we were at practice. Uh, but for me, I did that. I started helping with that camp when I was a player and kept doing it as a coach. And, you know, it, it's always rewarding to be working with the younger generations of baseball and, and keeping them excited about our game. And that was a big part of campus, trying to make sure it was fun and uh, you know, the, the six-year-olds that have the attention span of a gnat want to keep showing up and playing baseball and, and you know, keeping our game uh, fun so that you know, they can be the next generation of superstars. Can you talk about the difference between – I saw that you were also a recruit for the women's um, basketball at St. Mary's. What's the difference between recruiting a basketball, women's basketball player, than a baseball player? I don't know. It's been a while since I've done it, so – I think the bigger difference sometimes is is the timelines for the men's and women's when it comes to recruit or just committing. The women's sports commit a little bit earlier, so we're on those players more as juniors, where sometimes the guys drag their feet a little bit more and they're looking to commit more into their senior year. Um, but in a lot of ways, especially at St. Mary's, things were very similar. Um, I was trying to get – players that want to come to St. Mary's and be at a place that, you know, I'd cared about for a very long time. Uh, when you're recruiting at your alma mater, things are a little bit easier because there's a, you can be a lot, you've been there, you know what it's like. You, and, and the parents understand that you, you know, being a student there, you wouldn't be selling that school if, if you didn't enjoy your time uh, as a student and, and now also believe in what you're doing as a coach. And, and in that aspect, we, we did a lot of things very similarly. We wanted to get kids on campus, get them to see you know, what it was like to be at St. Mary's, uh, to be, you know, a Seahawk. And, and, and then in that regard, it was very similar. Sometimes the way you had to approach it and the things that guys cared about versus what the, the women cared about are a little bit different. Um, but, but in a lot of ways, it's, it's pretty similar. What was it like being the assistant coach for the women's basketball program? Yeah, I mean, I loved it. I, I love coaching basketball. Um, it's, it's very different than baseball. Baseball, a lot of times you get to a weekend, you're kind of rolling the ball out there and, and letting them play, and uh, you don't get to interact and, and do as much substitution because once a guy's out, they're out. So you got to let your guys kind of go out there and play. 
Uh, you know, basketball, it's a lot more fast paced. You're, you're getting the subs in and out. And, you know, that, that part of it's very exciting as a coach. Um, when I started out, I was just a student, uh, student assistant. So it was a lot of filming and, and just helping out at practice. But then, you know, as I got older, uh, Crystal was, was great about letting me get more hands on. And, and, you know, same thing, just like being a pitching coach, I worked with the, the forwards and the centers and, and at practice doing um, drills with them that, you know, I had also done when I was playing basketball in high school. And, and some of the scouts that you do for basketball and preparing for other teams' offenses and defenses are a little bit more in-depth than, than you all sometimes see with baseball. Um, but, you know, for me, it was it was a passion thing. I would coached basketball for a long time. Like I said, my mom was a basketball coach, so I've been in the gym a lot. And I, I really missed having something going on in those winter months when I got to college. I, it was just a kind of a hole in my life. So, uh, you know, I asked the first women's basketball coach that was there if I could help out. And she was great about, you know, bringing me on. And Crystal kept me around for the next couple of years after that. And it was just, for me, it was it's something to keep my cup full uh, all year round. That's wonderful. Can you talk about your playing career at St. Mary's? Yeah, uh, you know, I went I'm from Massachusetts originally, so I went a, went a long way away from home to, uh, to, to play some baseball. Um, we were, you know, up and down a lot of times at, at St. Mary's. Um, we had a really fast start to my freshman year, and we were, you know, ranked for a little while in, in the D3 polls and then didn't finish out the year as well as we wanted, and, and our sophomore year was – not great as well, but, you know, I think that was a, it was a good thing for us overall. The players saw that the work that we were putting in wasn't what it needed to be for us to really uh, compete with the best teams in our conference. And that the CAC is, 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 or was one of the best conferences around, you know, we had Salisbury and Frostburg making the, the D3 world series in the same year. York and Pennsylvania was a very, very good team. Mary Washington's always been a very good team. Stevenson was a team that, you know, could come at you and beat you every single weekend. So, you know, I, when I left that conference, I, I would have argued that it was one of the best conferences in, in, in the country. And, you know, you knew you couldn't take a weekend off. Uh, and that and that really tough sophomore year for us bonded us as, as guys in a program. Uh, and, and, you know, I'd been a, a starter for, for three years and we had a really, really good junior year. We had some guys get healthy. Uh, some guys kind of flipped the switch in their senior year. And, and we ended up with a, with a home playoff game my, my junior year, which was a lot of fun. That hadn't happened at all, excuse me, while I, was, uh, while I was playing there previously. So it was great to be able to play a game in front of our home fans and um, you know, win a big game at home. And those playoffs, you know, they didn't end up finishing the way that we wanted them to, but uh, we were close. We were really, really close at that point in time. And, and, you know, I think that was exciting to see what the potential of St. Mary's baseball could be when, you know, we got the right guys in there and we're doing, doing the right things uh, week in and week out. And, you know, we, we struggled with the loss of a lot of those seniors in my senior year and we did as much as we could to, uh, to, you know, repeat the success of the year before, but fell a little bit short of that. But, you know, in general, it was, it was a good group of guys and, and we push each other a lot. That's the thing with division three, you know, you don't have your coaches on you and telling you what to do every single day. You have to take a lot on yourself as a player uh, and as a team to, to work in that off season time. And, and the guys got that. And I think when we left, we had left that, that legacy of work and, and the, the guys that were going to come after the one that I were coaching understood, Hey, we need to continue to work as hard as the guys that were here previously, if we want to maintain the success that they were having uh, in the last couple of years. Speaking about division three, can you talk about coaching in the division three versus coaching in the vi division two? Yeah. I mean, I've only been at division three. Uh, so the biggest thing tends to be that we don't have athletic scholarships and, you know, it's been something that uh, I've always kind of enjoyed. I, you know, every guy that's showing up here is playing for the love of the game. There's, there's no worry about, you know, who's playing and who's getting so much money from the program and things like that. Um, in, the, in the fall season, we get a little bit less time with the guys as they would at, you know, the higher levels. Uh, we get 16 dates uh, to practice, and we usually do that over four weeks here. And then, you know, the guys do some other things on their own to stay in shape and stay ready. Uh, we don't have an hours limit that they have at some of the higher levels. We can do as much as we want in, in a given day with them. Now, and I, we don't kill the guys, but we do jam pack those few days that we have of practice with as much as we can. 
And then when you get to the the springtime, things are pretty similar. We're, we get 40 games. I think Division Two gets 40 games now also. And, you know, we're going six days a week as soon as we start uh, practices up in January. And once you get to the springtime, things are honestly pretty similar from level to level. The, uh, the higher levels might get to play. You know, D1 might get to play a few more games than us. Uh, but, you know, our, our uh, national tournament is set up the same way as the, the higher levels are. We have a conference tournament. You get to play a lot of games. There's a lot of baseball going on. Uh, our conference, we even play a lot of uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, single game each day series, which is how a lot of the D1s do it as well. Uh, so, you know, we're trying to treat it like we're a very high level of baseball. Can you talk about the recruitment process now as a head coach for the Bre Brew River? Sure. Now, here at Brevard, we do um, start with the uh, – identification of prospects and, and finding guys that we think can, can really help us talent wise uh, that, you know, that involves going out to, to high school games, uh, summer tournaments, showcases. Uh, sometimes there's guys that reach out to us too and watching a lot of video over the email, especially the way things have been with the, the COVID time, not being able to be at as many events. It's, it's a lot of emails from a lot of guys and, and seeing who we think can really help us and identifying our needs as a program. Uh, and it's, it's spending time talking to guys on the phone or, or text messages and getting to know who they are, getting to know what they're looking for in a school, making sure that their academic needs, their financial situation, all of that can line up with what we can provide them here at Brevard. And, and then the biggest thing for us is, is getting guys on campus. We want them to come and, and see the school, see what Brevard has to offer. Uh, you know, it's, it's a great little area in the mountains. We get a ton of guys that, that love to hunt and fish and you know, go for a hike. Um, but, you know, it's not like that's the only thing to do around here. It's just one of the, the many options that we have. You know, and I think once they're on campus, they start to picture themselves here. They can see themselves here for four years. Um, they go through the admissions process, get in on that side of things and, and go through the financial aid process to make sure all that works. And then, you know, when we get guys that you know we want here and they want to be with us and they think it's going to be a great relationship, then we're going to move forward there. That's the biggest thing for us. We want guys that that want to be here, want to be at Brevard, and want to pick us as the place they see themselves playing for four years and going to school for four years. Can you talk about the official visit at Brevard? Sure. Uh, you know, when we get here, we do a lot with admissions. The, there's a pretty consistent process that we go through so they can meet with an admissions counselor and, and get hooked up on that side of things. Uh, so usually a day starts with us, you know, greeting people and then heading over to, uh, to, to go through the admissions tour um, go through a financial aid presentation and, and meet with that admissions counselor to answer you know, questions that, that parents may have uh, on the financial aid side of things, on the academic side of things. And then we usually get lunch. Uh, normal circumstances, we'll take them over to the CAF if we can when it's open. Uh, you know, make sure that they understand that we have some good food here that they'll, they'll you know, not get sick of over four years. Uh, and then we show them the athletic side of things, take them through the weight room and take them over to our baseball field and, and, you know, have deeper conversations about what baseball looks like here and what, how they might fit in with our program. On a typical visit, of course, not with Corona, do y'all get to like, let them try on jerseys and stuff to make sure that uh, they feel comfortable for here for the next four years and can wrap that blue? Yeah. Um, I haven't done anything like that. I know a lot of places do. Um, we haven't had, you know, we're, we're kind of in the process of switching over to some new uniforms. Uh, we, were, we went all Nike as a department, so I haven't had anybody try things on. We usually have them out and so guys can see what they would look like. Um, but I know I haven't done, I haven't done that yet. What are some future um, plans when it comes to the recruitment side? Um, you know, it's just, it's just trying to continue to build up the depth on our, on our team, uh, and continue to bring guys in here that want to be part of our culture. You know, the, we talk about winning conference championships and dogpiling, and we're just trying to continue to go out and find the guys that are going to help us achieve that goal and, and want to be great representatives of our program on campus, uh, you know, getting involved in a positive way, you know, being great students, being great academically. We talk about being the best, at, being great at everything that you do, and, and we want guys that want to come in here and, and buy into that mantra. That's wonderful. What advice would you give upcoming high school athletes looking to get recruited to the next level? You know, I think we see a lot of like mass recruiting right now. And I think as a, as a PSA, you should be looking into schools that appeal to you. Try to find 
schools that you think will be a great fit, whether, you know, academically, make sure they'll work financially, look at rosters to see what they have and make sure you're going to fit in there and have an opportunity to play and identify those schools and reach out to them. Don't be afraid to reach out to coaches, see if they're going to have camps on their campus and go to those camps. And usually you can get yourself a, a pretty good feel for how the baseball program is going to be run while you're there at those camps, getting to interact with some players and some coaches and, and, and you know, taking tours of the campus to make sure you feel like you're going to fit in there. Uh, I know that worked the best for me as, as a player was, you know, going to some camps in, in some areas where I really saw myself fitting in. Uh, and that's why we love doing those camps here also is to get some kids on campus that maybe we haven't seen before and, and that are really excited to be at Brevard. Uh, and yeah, and always keep working. You know, there's always going to be a place where, where you can play, um, you know, whether it be D3, D2, NAIA, JUCO, you know, give them all a shot and find the best fit for you. That's wonderful. What advice would you give upcoming college coaches looking to get into the profession? It's, you know, ask a lot of questions. It doesn't have to just be of other baseball coaches. There's, you know, usually a lot of coaches in your department. Uh, if you're starting to think about it as a player, you know, get yourself involved in the athletic department in a positive way. You know, I helped out with, with sports information and, you know, I was already helping with the basketball coaching as a, as a player. Um, and make sure you get in the good graces of other coaches and athletic directors at your school because they're going to be great references for you. And uh, there's a lot of graduate assistant programs out there. I think that's a great opportunity if you can get involved with one of those and get a get a master's degree paid for while also getting your college coaching experience. That's big, you know. And be ready for some for some lean times. You know, it's not your your first big job doesn't always come right away. There's going to be some volunteer times where you got to work a couple jobs on the side and and do what you need to do to to stay in the profession uh, and, and, you know, all that grinding and, and, and the hard work and the hard days, the long days, it all pays off once you get to this level and you get yourself into this position and you're going to hear no a lot, whether it be from recruits or from, uh, you know, resumes being sent out, interviews, and, and but it's all worth it when you get to get to the place where you want to be. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the baseball program app? So we got um, we got our team Twitter, which is uh, BC NATO Baseball. And what am I on Twitter right now? Um, I'm uh, at Coach underscore Victory, and those are two of our best you know places where we're the most active. Uh, we're on in Instagram too, which I'm pretty sure is BC NATO Baseball. Also, uh, we're more active with that in the springtime. Um, and those are those are our most frequented accounts. Thank you again. Bavar's head coach Mike for your interview and best of luck in this upcoming season. Thanks for having me. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, coach, for your interview and best of luck. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, Share and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.